Hey community, this is Dr. Yu coming at you again, and today I got another webinar where I've been studying and studying and studying and helping lots and lots of people just like yourself, and today's webinar is going to be on dysautonomia. 100% of every client that I worked with had dysautonomia. So what the heck is dysautonomia? And if you're looking at this video, there's probably a 100% chance that you actually have dysautonomia. So let me go in and explain exactly what the heck is dysautonomia and how it affects you and what's actually going on. So if you're having some weird neurological problems, you went to doctor to doctor to doctor, they don't know what's going on, the neurological problems come and go, you have some form of dysautonomia, and the fact of the matter is I can, I've helped lots and lots of people recover from dysautonomia. So in the conventional system, they're going to tell you you're crazy. Here's some, some um, you know, antidepressant medication. Here's some anti-anxiety medication, which is completely 100% BS. You go in and the, the symptoms jump all over the place because your brain is not functioning properly. So dysautonomia. If you have any symptoms that are weird or unusual, you probably have it. So let's go in and figure out exactly what's going on and how you can get better. And, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about is you getting better. Better. So dysautonomia. 70 million, let me say that again, 70 million people suffer from this worldwide. And in my opinion, this is way, way higher than 70 million people. So what exactly is dysautonomia? So dysautonomia has to do with your automatic nervous system. So when we talk about this is what your autonomic nervous system does is it regulates all the things that you're not thinking about. So for example, such as your heart rate, your blood pressure, digestion, dilation of your arteries, constriction of your arteries, your eyes, your kidneys, temperature control, all these things are going on in your body right now, right the second, the way God designed it automatically. This is your automatic, uh, your your autonomic nervous system that is on, it's on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. So when you have dysautonomia, that part of that nervous system is dysregulated. Now here's a nice little graph that I created. So what you're going to see here is dysautonomia facts. And basically it says here, dysautonomia can impact many different organs. So this autonomy impacts your organs because your organs aren't under your like uh, control. It's not like you can think, okay, digestion work, okay, heart work, heart beat. Like that doesn't happen. So this is an automatic, it's an automatic pilot. This is dysautonomia. So all these organs can be affected. Your heart, blood vessels, kidneys, spleen, skin. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, well, gosh, I got kidney problems. I got spleen problems. I got skin problems. I got stomach problems, bladder, pancreas, gallbladder, lungs, small intestine, large intestine, eyes, and immune system all are under the control of your nervous system, which you don't have control of. This is why it's called dysautonomia. Now, what dysautonomia is, it's a problem of the brain. It's a problem of the brain and you see it or you feel the effects in your organ. So let me just move my little picture. So the problem is in your brain. It's a brain problem, but you express it in your organ. So this is why you might go and you say, I have a racing heart, right? My heart is racing or I have anxiety. You go to the conventional system, they say, well, you're depressed. You need some anxiety medication. They're not actually addressing your brain. They're not actually addressing the cause of the problem. So this is why I specialize in a lot of different things. Functional neurology is one of them, functional medicine. And we're actually getting to the root cause of the problem. You're not going to get better unless you get, unless you dig in and figure out what's happening with your problem. Where's the root cause of the problem? And why is your brain not functioning properly? If your brain's not firing, if your brain's not firing properly, you're going to have weird neurological symptoms. People are going to tell you you're crazy. It's in your head. And in reality, it's not. It's dysautonomia in the conventional system. They have no tools on how to find it and how to fix it and how to correct it. Well, good thing I do. Okay, so if you're watching this, give me a comment below. Are, are, do you think you have dysautonomia? Um, share the link. Okay, so here we're going to go over your brain and how your brain is actually functioning here. So what you're going to be looking at, because we're talking about a brain problem, dysautonomy is a brain problem. So I'm just going to kind of circle this whole area right in here. So this whole part of your brain, which is basically your, it's deep inside your brain, it's your midbrain, this has to do with all your automatic nervous system functions. So all the things that we talked about are in, deep inside the midbrain. 
Now, what happens here is you have impulses coming up. So this would be your spinal cord right here coming up. Lots of impulses coming up, coming up, coming up. And then you have a lot of impulses from the brain firing down, firing down, firing down, firing down into your automatic nervous system right here. So if this is not functioning properly, if this area is not functioning properly, you are going to have weird unexplainable neurological neurological conditions that no one understands. You're going to go to neurologist to neurologist and they're going to give you a pill for this and a pill for that and no one's going to get to the root cause of the problem. So lots of healing takes place in this midbrain right in here. Okay, so let me give you a quick orientation. So this right here is your midbrain, right? That's where all your autonomic nervous system is, the, the things that just work autopilot. This is your jaw, and this is your spinal cord, and this is like what we call your cortex. Okay, here's another picture. I'm just trying to give you another picture right here. This is the back of your head right in here. So this is where all those autonomic nervous systems are. This is your jaw, and your spinal cord comes firing up. So impulses come down in this area, and then they are go through this area. Then they're sent down your spinal cord into your organs, into your skin. So if this part of your brain is not well, you're going to have dysautonomia, which basically means you have weird neurological symptoms. And guess what? We have answers for you. Here's another great picture. This is from the front. So you see the eyeballs right in here. And then you see this is all where that neurological center is at. Just to kind of give you a reference point in here. When we talk about this area right in here, this area right back in here, which is right back in here, that has more neurons. This little area here that's like the big, the size of your fist called your cerebellum has more neurons in here than your whole entire brain. Your whole entire brain has more neurons right in here, and this is the gate center. So what's this telling you is this is gating everything that's going down and everything that is coming up. So if this is not healthy, if this part of your brain's not healthy, called your cerebellum, you're going to have dysautonomia. This is really, really critical. So these are some symptoms that you can have if you have dysautonomia, rapid heart rate, orthostatic hypotension, chronic fatigue, anxiety, temperature regulation, shortness of breath, irritable bowel, gas, bloating, diarrhea, dizziness, and migraines. These are just to name a few of the problems you can have if your automatic nervous system is not functioning properly. Okay, so this is a really, really important graph. So I want to take my time so you understand what's happening. Your nervous system is developed into two components. So we have right here, we have the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's the green car, and this is relax and digest. This is what we want. We want to be relaxed. We want to be calm. Parasympathetic is relax and digest. You're just taking a nice stroll in your car. You have the coffee there and you're drinking some coffee. At least I think that's some coffee there. So that's what we want. We want the parasympathetic nervous system, which is relax and digest. And then we have this over here, which is your sympathetic nervous system, which is your flight or fight, right? So your fight or flight parasympathetic nervous system. So this is driving fast. This is your go, go, go. You're scared. You're alert. You're freaking out. This is what happens now. When you have dysautonomia, there needs to be a balance between the fast car here and, or the slow car here and the fast car. There needs to be a balance. Now, what happens when you have dysautonomia? Your sympathetic nervous system right in here, this portion is up regulated. So you're always go, go, go. You're on the fight or flight. So fight, like you're going to stay there and fight, or you're going to, you're going to fight or you're going to flight. Right, So you're going to fight or you're going to run away. That's pretty much what that means. right? So when you have dysautonomia, this part of your nervous system is dysregulated. And when I say dysregulated, it's upregulated. Okay, so let's go into this on what the parasympathetic system does. So um, it constricts your pupils. It stimulates saliva production. It slows your heart calm. It causes your airways to constrict, so you're not like, uh, so you can just breathe nice and calmly. You don't, you're not hyperventilating. It stimulates your stomach activity. It stimulates your gallbladder. It stimulates your intestines to start digesting food. It causes your bladder to constrict, right, to be healthy. Now, if you have a sympathetic nervous system, it causes your pupils to dilate. Now, why would your pupils dilate? So if I'm running away from something, right, I mean, really close to the camera, if I'm running away from something, a tiger, 
my pupils, my eyes are going to dilate, right? They're going to dilate. This is going to be a sympathetic storm. This is a fast car. It's going to inhibit saliva production because when you're running away from the tiger, you don't need to have good GI system, right? You're talking about survival here. It increases your heart rate. So you have a sympathetic tone. You are your increased nervous system. You wake up with a beating heart. You wake up with um, sweats. You get in a crowded place and you get anxiety. Noise and lights bother you, right? It relaxes, it relaxes your airways because if you're running away from a tiger, your airway needs to open up. You need more air in there. It inhibits stomach activity. It, it, it inhibits gallbladder. It inhibits your intestinal system and it secretes more epinephrine and norepinephrine, which is your stress hormones, and it relaxes the bladder. So a lot of people, as they get older and they start and they get stressed out, they get incontinence. Why? Because when you're running away from the tiger, you don't need a full bladder. You want to actually pee your pants, get rid of the water, get rid of that weight so you can run a little bit faster. So this is what's happening when you have a dysautonomia condition is the sympathetic, the fast part of your nervous system is over firing. It's working too much. And then you're getting all these symptoms. Now, what are some possible cause of this getting to the root cause of the problem? There are many, and I'll state this again. 100% of the clients that I work with have some kind of form of dysautonomia. Some people have a lot or some people have a little, some people have a lot of dysautonomia. So here's the things that you got to look for. Do you have low vitamin D? Do you have a poor GI health? How's your cell membrane health? Are you taking fish oils? Are you taking phosphatidylcholine? That helps the cell membrane. Have you had concussions? This is a huge one out there. Have you had concussions? Have you dinged your head? Have you seen spots? Have you gotten in a car accident where you got whiplash? Because that causes trauma to your brain. And over a period of time, that will cause dysautonomia. Let's say in your 50s and you had a concussion when you were in high school playing sports. That concussion from when you are in high school to today could be affecting you could be contributing to your dysautonomia. Did you take antibiotics? Did you take Leviquin? Did you take Cipro? Did you take the fluoroquinolone toxicity drugs? Do you have food sensitivities? Do you have a gluten sensitivity? Do you have a dairy sensitivity? These three are critical down here. These are what I call low-hanging fruit. Do you have low, low blood pressure? Do you have low blood sugar? Are you clinically subclinical anemia, meaning that you can't be diagnosed with anemia, but you don't have optimal iron levels. So for example, if someone has low blood pressure, if you have low blood pressure, blood pressure is not getting to your head. Dysautonomia, again, is a brain problem, but you feel it in your organs. It's expressed in your organs. So this is why you'll say, well, I have a, 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 a heart that's beating, a fast heartbeat. Oh, go to the cardiologist. I just got off the phone with someone. Go to the cardiologist. Well, guess what? Your heart scan comes back fine. Your EKG comes back fine. They did a CT scan with contrast in his heart. Guess what? It's fine. He still has a, a racing heart. What's happening? Dysautonomia. They haven't addressed the brain. They haven't addressed all these things that we're talking about right here. So these need to be addressed. So look at your own case. Like how many of these components have you addressed? So this is why if you're out there suffering, get a hold of me. We can figure out what's happening with your body so you can get better. All these things need to be addressed to figure out what's happening. Are you inflamed? Do you have high CRP rate, high set rate, high homocysteine? These are inflammatory markers. You check on blood work. Do you have low magnesium? Do you have mold? Do you have uh, heavy metals? Do you stress? Everyone has stress, right? Do you have an autoimmune disease against your neurological tissue? This is very common. The conventional system, it's overblown. You can do tests on this. Do you have an autoimmune disease against your brain tissue? Do you have autoimmune disease against your heart? Do you have autoimmune disease against your adrenal glands that produce these stress hormones? All these things need to be addressed. Uh, do you have not enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach? Again, like when we go up here. So if we go up here and we look at if you have dysautonomia, we know that your GI system, your GI functions are what? Down. So in your gut, in your stomach, you need hydrochloric acid to break down food. So if you're stressed out and if you're in this sympathetic storm, you're not eating, you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid to break down foods. If you're not producing enough hydrochloric acid to break down foods, your foods can't be broken down. Then the foods start to ferment. You can get small bacterial overgrowth. And then what happens is then because these proteins aren't broken down, they get in your bloodstream and cause more inflammation. So it's a big snowball effect. If you have one thing that just continues to get worse and worse and worse, this is why you need to look at your case and figure out what's the root cause of the problem. And then like an onion, you start to peel away the onions and figure out what's happening. Okay. So not enough hydrochloric acid, 
Do you have high insulin levels? Are you pre-diabetic? Do you have infections? Do you have Epstein-Barr virus? Did you get COVID and you fully didn't recover from COVID? Do you have mycoplasm? Do you have hepatitis? There's so many different viruses that can live in your system that will weigh you down and that will cause dysautonomia in your body. Okay, so this is a really, really important slide. So I want to take my time on this. So we're going to take two things. We're going to take two things as light sensitivity and sound sensitivity. Now, when we talk about dysautonomia and your sympathetic nervous system being increased, right? It's the fast racing car. Now, way back in the day, like, you know, whatever, 100,000 years ago, if we saw someone in something in our field, like if we saw something moving over there, we would look over there and we'd be scared, right? Our eyes, our pupils would dilate. What is that? Is that a tiger that's going to kill us? Is that a bear that's going to kill us? Is that some kind of other tribe that's coming up and going to invade our space, right? So this is a sympathetic response. It's a survival response. So people can be light sensitive and sound sensitive because back 100,000 years ago, if you heard something, what's going to happen to your immune response? It's going to go up. You're going to be in this fight or flight response because you need to be cautious because it's a survival instinct. Now, here's what happens. This is really important down in here. So when we talk about your, let me blow me up here. Okay, when we talk about your nervous system and how it fires, it's an all or none principle, just like turning on a light switch. So like right now, see that? Like I have lights behind me. They're off, they're on. Off, they're on. Your nervous system works the same way. It's an all or none principle, meaning this. Let me just make me smaller meaning this right in here. So we have this in here. So you can see here, there's going to be two lines. There's going to be a lower line and then an upper line. And then, so this is healthy. This is healthy. And then in here we have unhealthy nerves. This is very, very important. So when we talk about the all or none principle, okay? So we're going to talk about a healthy neuron. So this is healthy. This is a big space in here, right? So this right here, this space from here, to here is big, okay? Here to here is smaller. So remember, this is an all or none principle. So what happens with this? So what happens with a normal healthy neuron? Let's say this is the distance right here. So we're just gonna go with sound. You have a sound, a sound, a sound, a sound, a sound, a sound, and then the sound goes away. See, it didn't hit this threshold and fire. This is an all or none principle. So it's really deep. You got your kids crying. You got your kids in the background making noise. You got the lawnmower going on. You got the dishwasher going on, right? Then maybe you have some weird lights coming in, but it didn't hit this threshold to fire because this is a healthy neuron. Now, what's happening to that threshold when you look at the sick, unhealthy neuron? Instead of being down here, we're down here. So you get a little sound, you get a little light, boom, it fires. And then it goes down here. And then you get a little loud, you get, you get a little uh, a sound, you get a little light, it fires. Right? Or maybe you get a little stressed out and it fires. So your nervous system is always firing like this. It's an all or none principle. This is dysautonomia. This slide right here, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up what dysautonomia is. This is so critical. So if you're here and if you have problems, guaranteed you're here. We can find this out. So the goal is to bring you from here and bring you to this normal state right in here. So there's this big distance. Fire, 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 fire. Okay, the stimulus is gone, you go back. This never went up here to fire and cause a stimulation. So, for example, when we talk about your eyes, I'll say, well, do you have light sensitivity? Yeah, ever since I've had these problems, ever since I had a kid, this, con this concussion, or ever since I took these antibiotics, or over a period of time, I've just become light sensitive because what's happened? At one time, you had a deep threshold right here. Now your threshold, at one time you were here, right? Lots of light could come in and cause no problems. Light, 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 no problems. Now you had this brain trauma, you're sensitive to gluten, whatever the problems are, the list that I just went over, now you're here, a little light comes in, boom, boom. Now you get a reaction. This starts to fire, now you get a migraine headache. Now you get spots. Now you get a racing heart, right? Now you get diarrhea. Now you get anxiety. Same thing with your ears. Now if you have a weak nervous system, dysautonomia, 
right? You have light and sound coming into your brain at the same time. So the worst thing might be when you get really bright light and a loud noise, then you're like, oh, I got to settle down. Or maybe just looking at the computer screen, the light from your computer screen is causing problems. Okay, so this is a very, very critical side. This sum summarize everything up. So the whole goal of what I do to get people better, a guided program, or the goal that you should try and do and figure out is if you're here, right? Poor threshold, you want to go right here to good threshold. And how do you figure that out? Well, these are some of the conditions right here that may cause that. Now, there's more than that, but this is a basic, really basic starting point. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, a, a couple gems right here, right? So, for example, these three right in here. So, let's say you do your blood pressure. If you can go to my website, website you can search blood pressure. Let me just do that. Okay, so this is my website right here. Dr. Hugh Wegworth. I know you can't see it. I'll put somewhere in the link here. It's Dr. Hugh Wegworth. You can go to my website and you can just put uh, pressure. And all the content I have about pl uh, low blood pressure right here. So too low blood pressure. Bring that up. I have a whole webinar, a whole video on low blood pressure and the problems with having low, bl low blood pressure is right there. So there's a lot of content that's actually on my site. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you don't have low blood pressure. If you do, here's a clinical gem that's going to cost you about 25 cents. You put some Himalayan salt and water and you start to drink it. That brings in sodium. Sodium retains water. Now you have more water. You have more water pressure. You have more blood pressure. Blood can get up to your head. And when blood can get up to your head, it can deliver oxygen. Your oxygen starts to breathe. And then you start making ATP and your mitochondria gets better. and You start to feel better. I can't tell you how many people I've helped simply with, hey, has anyone checked your blood pressure? Did you go through this protocol? I have a very specific protocol. No, they come back and wow, they have uh, blood pressure of like uh, 100 over 65, way, way too low. Blood pressure should be 120 over 80. That's the ideal blood pressure to put blood up into your brain. <clears throat> then some people will have hypoglycemia. I have a protocol for that on my website. Go on my website, type in sugar problems. It will come up. A lot of women, more women have subclinical anemia. Like they can't be diagnosed with anemia in the conventional system, but they have it there. It's there, right? So these things need to be looked at. So again, our goal is to take you from here, poor threshold to here, good threshold. Then all your organs start to function better. Okay, let me go back to your dysautonomia. So your whole nervous system is connected to all these organs. So let's say here, let's just take your immune system, for example. If you dis, if you have dysautonomia affecting your immune system, are you going to have a strong or weak immune system? You're going to have a weak immune system. That's just how it's going to go. Let's say here you have dysautonomia in your intestinal system. What are you going to have? You're going to have gas. You're going to have bloating, right? That's what's going to happen in that system. Let's say you have dysautonomia with the nerves going to the heart. So you have to see here, the brain sits here and these nerves go to these organs. So the brain sits here and the nerve goes to that heart. That's how God designed the body. So if you have dysautonomia in the part of your brain, right? Dysautonomia, easy firing that goes to your heart. You're going to have a racing heart. It's that simple. If you have dysautonomia, this nerve that goes to your eyes, you're going to have light sensitivity. It's that simple. Okay, if you have dysautonomia, this nerve goes to your ear, what are you going to have? You're going to have sound sensitivity. So I hope this is making sense. And the thing is, you got to dive in and look to see where the problems are at, the potential problems, which are right in here. If you look at all these, you're going to find something that, that, that's wrong that your body's not functioning with. Okay, this right here. I like pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. So I'm going to try and sum it up in a picture because I think pictures are really, really valuable. So here over this side, we have dysautonomia. <clears throat> now, when we talk about your nervous system and how your nervous system functions, there's a stop portion and there's a go portion. That's how the nervous system works. Now, 90% of your brain is stopping. Okay, let me show you in this picture right here. This portion right in here that we talked about where all your neurological centers are at is stop. This is the mom or the dad or the parent that's telling your kids you can't go out. My daughter is just turning 13 and her shorts are too short. Okay, that's just how it is. So it's my job as a parent to say, you know what? 
you ain't wearing those shorts to the fair. <laughs> you go upstairs and you wear sweatpants. <laughs> so it doesn't exactly go like that, but you're getting my analogy here, right? This is the stop zone, right? This stops the things, the neurological impulses from going up too much and going down to all your organs too much. So this is a stop mechanism. Okay, so let's get to your brain. So 90% of your brain is stop. It's stopping things from occurring. Does that make sense? It's stopping things. It's slow. It's the person riding the green car, sipping their coffee. Then when you have dysautonomia, now the go part, I should say maybe the go is a little more important. So this here go is 10%. So 10% go. Now when you have dysautonomia, now instead of 10% go, you have what? 25% go. So imagine this in your car. If you're only using 10% of the gas and now you're zooming up, right? Or maybe you put, maybe, maybe, you, yeah, okay. So you, you use more gas. You're using a lot more gas. You're using gas up to 25% more. What's going to happen to your engine? It's going to start to rev up. What's going to happen to your neurological system? It's going to start to rev up. And this is when you're going to start to get dysautonomia. So most of your brain is stopping things from occurring. And when that mechanism is damaged, no longer is there stop, there is more go. And when there's more go, what happens to your symptoms? You get weird neurological symptoms that no one can explain because no one knows what's going on. Here's a drug, you're crazy, good luck, and you go to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, and in reality, you have dysautonomia. Now, this took me, I've been practicing 23 years. I've been studying neuro neurology, functional neurology, probably for seven years, hardcore. It's taken me a long time to connect the dots and to present it in a way that you can understand this. Okay, so let me just do this one more time because some people need to have it explained more and more. I'm the same way. I need to listen to something 100 times. So your nervous system, 90% is stop. So most of your brain up here is saying stop. It's the parent saying, you know what, Gracie, those shorts are a little too uh, short. When you can see your butt hanging out, they're too short. That qualifies as no go. That's a stop right there at the door. Don't pass go. Don't leave the house. And if you have a boyfriend come over or something like this, she's 13, so she doesn't have that. I'm going to get my shotgun out and go and get sweatpants. Okay. So this is 90% stop. Gracie's not getting out of the house. Now what happens is when you have dysautonomia, instead of a 10% go, so another analogy would be only 10% of Gracie's outfits are actually going to pass my inspection. Only 10%. That's normal. One out of 10 outfits is appropriate. The only ones that's appropriate is the sweatpants and the sweatshirt. That's it. <laughs> okay. So now you come over here. Now what's happening when you have dysautonomia, now 25% of her outfits are passing. The ones where her butt cheats are hanging out are starting to pass, right? So what happens is it's revved up. The nervous system is revved up, and this is when you get all these weird neurological symptoms. So with that being said, what the heck do you do? Well, if you want some specific help and guidance, Go to my website, schedule a call, a Zoom call. I help people all over the world. But this is what you need to look at. You need to look at all these different things right in here. And I can tell you, these things right here, these things right here, the three things, anemia, low blood pressure, and low blood sugar need to be addressed and they need to be figured out. Now, also, if you've had any concussions, that sets your brain up for problems in the future. People say, well, I didn't have any problems right away when I had the concussion or when I got dazed or when I got knocked unconscious. Or I say, well, uh, people say, you know what? I, I didn't get in. I never got in, in a, I never had any concussions. Well, were you, in a, were you in any car accidents? And this happened today. The guy says, well, now when I think about it, like I was in a car accident, but I didn't get a concussion. Well, what happened? Well, my chest was all blue. And this is like, you know, he's my age 50, and this happened when he was in 20. He said, I said, he said, well, my chest is all, was all bruised. I'm like, okay, well, was that from the seatbelt then? He's like, no, he didn't have a seatbelt on. That was from his chest hitting the steering wheel. So did, you, that, did that cause trauma to his brain? Yep. 
Did he have problems right away? Nope. He didn't have problems right away. This is in the future. Now he has major dysautonomia. He has balance problems. He has anxiety. He has sweating. He has a racing heart. This is when he's 50. 30 years later and 30 years of life, 30 years of toxins, 30 years of poisons, and he had mold exposure too five years ago. So all these things add up to someone not doing well. So these are the big ones right here. So these three right here, and if you had concussions, and then you got to clean up your diet. Do an autoimmune AIP diet, autoimmune paleo diet. Go on my website, search AIP, put that in the key term, put AIP, put autoimmune paleo. These are all the things that need to be looked at and addressed to see if you actually have any underlying causes for causing your dysautonomy. Here's what I know with 100% certainty. That right now, if you have some weird neurological problem, you have dysautonomia. And with that being said, no one's actually been able to figure out what's going on because no one's had the training that I have to figure out what is actually occurring in your body. You can get well. God designed us to be well. You deserve to be well. Everyone deserves to be well. The, con the conventional system is not helping people. If I cut my arm off, I'm going there. If you have a chronic condition, you're not going to get better. Or you would not be watching this video. Contact me. Get on my website. Get the content. And remember, is where there is help, there's hope. Take care. Bye-bye.